Mother, let your children play. <laughs> you listen to some Danzig. Danzig? Yeah, you never heard that, that mother song? Mother. No, no. Bro, you gotta get into some Danzig. I'm... I, I'm not sure I know even one Danzig I, song. I yeah, I have to admit I, I, don't I know what he looks like. Oh I've seen people God. make fun of his appearance on numerous occasions, but uh, I don't know his music. I like the Misfits and Danzig. Um, wait, is that wait? He's he's a member of the Misfits. Yeah, he was. Oh, okay. So that's that's like the, the, he, he's he like left. Zachary's big favorite. <laughs> what is? Misfits? Zachary Harrison, yeah, Zachary, our friend Zachary Harrison. He likes he likes the Misfits. Oh, I, I mean to the point. Well, why are you doxing a- Zachary, man? <laughs> now, more- now everyone's <laughs> gonna know he loves the Misfits. Fucking community yeah. doxed Zachary. <laughs> the show community, or is it Parks and Rec? One of those NBC comedy fun fun shows. Uh, and now we have corroborating them. evidence in this uh, podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. So wait a minute, he likes Misfits, or I think, I think it's like it's like a. Like he like kind of likes them, but I think it's more of like a joke that everyone was like, "Oh man!" You, to the point where, um, you know, our, our mutual mutual friend Lee, I'm just gonna say Lee because she hasn't been doxxed by the world. Yeah. Uh, for his birthday, got him uh, a tank top, a muscle tank top that just says the Misfits on the logo. <laughs> so nice. But he, but he likes them joking. I think he likes them like generally as well, but oh. not like a, like amazingly. I think I think he's just like, oh yeah, they're cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I like them. I could be I like wrong. Them. I, think I could be great. totally wrong. But you know, do we no, like Star Trek? <laughs> Star Trek? Yeah. I don't like Star Trek. Okay, <laughs> we should stop this podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is a gigantic uh, <laughs> for for the new listeners. <laughs> um, hey, are you a new listener? Welcome. Uh, we enjoy that you're joining us here today. If you're an old listener, what's up, pals? It's your old friend Ricardo. You know, I like to drop the F word and the dude word. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, fuck but if dude. you're a new listener and you're easily offended or, you know, stuff like that, uh, we, we respect that shit. We, we, that's fine. No worries. No problems, brah. Yeah. You missed uh, this entire, entire conversation from before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you you, you missed the days. You, you, you guys are interrupting me. You. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. You ruined the fucking punchline, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God, sorry. Dude, I was, was going to talk about more butt stuff, but do I do I come in here? Do I go in there and, and knock the fucking Del Taco out of your hands, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> you you put it there. I know. <laughs> you fucking put the Del Taco in my hands, Ricardo. I ate Taco Bell fucking yesterday. <laughs> it was all right. Um, yeah. So yeah, so if you're a new listener and you're easily offended, we get it. That's cool, bra. Go somewhere else. We that, that's why we're we're 31 flavors, dude, and we're the 32nd flavor. The one that's a little <laughs> sour, it's hard to swallow. It tastes like avocado, but some people fucking love avocado ice cream. So I yeah. I love avocado ice cream. That is well, actually yeah, that's why you're delicious. on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, if you keep listening, it was the only like, place oh. left. They were so, <laughs> they were so offensive. Uh, you know what? That's your problem, dude. Uh, fuck you for keep keep listening. Don't keep listening if, you, if, you, if you're offended. <laughs> um, that's on you, pals. Uh, um, but if you're, but if they you're have to know if we've been you. successfully canceled yet. That's true. That's true. We haven't. Why aren't they? Uh, some I think like someone unironically like messaged me yesterday. It's like you know. You guys are doing a disservice to yourself by cursing so much. Good people don't curse. <laughs> yeah, thinking, right. we're we're not good people. <laughs> we're humans. Have, if, if you could listen to if we were this good people, podcast we at be all, human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By, by just yeah. being exactly a human, going. by yeah. just being a human, you're just like a piece of shit. Yeah. Even like when you get to the level of a saint, you're still in the shit arena. Yeah. Like you're, you can't you're, get you're out shit of adjacent. It. You're shit adjacent. Yeah. You're always gonna have touched shit. Just yeah. by being born as a human, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. It's true. I mean, literally, the, you're full of shit when you come out. Sometimes, yeah. Hey, hey and, guess what? If you're a human, you know what you have to deal with? Shit, stuff, like, like your your stuff. teeth slowly turning against you as you age. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, Dan I went to the dentist today, yeah. so yeah. you know this week's I, sponsor. I, it's just on my mind. Dental lately. USA. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> dental? No, don't give them a free thing. <laughs> no, no. They need to. Um, pass. 
uh, <laughs> they should have like a dental pass where you're like, you could choose either to get your work done or they just take it out <laughs> and they, they put a fake one in, you know, like, they're like, look, this is going to, this is a root canal. This is a crown or we could just take it out and put a fake one in. And it's you've just so told the dentist before, like you were just like, can you just remove this? I just don't want it anymore. Yeah. Like, and they're like, no, no, we'll fix it. It's like, no, just, just take it, dude. I'm not using <laughs> dentist it. will listen to you yeah. and just say like, fine extraction. There's a code for that. Yeah. <laughs> It's like yeah, it's replace all my my teeth with explosive teeth. Man, the so human body people just sucks. It's just so oh, inefficient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, this is this is why I understand here. I'm going to get into this is related to Star Trek that in some way or, or shape or form. Um, we have all these the te- technological marvels and and science advances mm-hmm. that we've had. We're the truth is we're not supposed to live past a certain age. All that is science. And mm. then people who deny science, they're like, oh, I accept some things, but the earth is not getting hotter. Um, <laughs> but but if I if I have a heart attack, yeah, take me to the doctor. I believe in science and the pills they're going to give me and all that shit. But, yes. <laughs> but that's as far as my, my, my trusting of science goes. I'm not going to get um, vaccinated. Oh, yeah. shit. Can I get vaccinated now that I've, I've gotten COVID? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Doctors came from God. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that's true. But- you know, what's so crazy is that we have all these advances. I don't think we're supposed to live past like 50, dude. <laughs> I think anything over 50 years. I mean, like, there's definitely diminishing returns after that point. Uh, I, uh, look, I'm going to, I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to go to 60, 60, but that's why I there's still an stand argument by, for that. I think. Yeah. There's just, yeah. I keep fucking yelling at no one will listen, dude. Hopefully one day someone will listen. We got to get the old people out of fucking Congress. And, and in general, <laughs> you shouldn't be able to serve. If you're older, over 60 years of age, just period. Like, uh, I, I, I do legitimately think if once you're old enough in Congress, like you should at least like mandate some sort of like mental health check, yeah. you know, routinely. No, and, and not a private one. Sure. Uh, no, and, it's I'm publicly. Sure. Not, a, not a private yeah. one. It needs no. to be taken publicly, yeah. live, live stream. on stream. Live stream. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're, well, yeah. I mean, that or hammer, C-span. human, dog, <laughs> animal. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see all television. Of them. Television. <laughs> Correctly define these slang terms that have gained popularity in the last yes, ten years. Yes, yes. If you can't name like one band from the last ten years, you're out. You're out. It's like you're you're stuck like twenty years from now. Like you're literally a, a human time machine. <laughs> um, Who is making look, these stallion? I know and great the, people. Nancy Pelosi is like, huh? Well, I know worse, amazingly worse beautiful people that are over 60, 60 years old, but I don't want them being fucking president or flying we, my planes or yeah. Here's the thing. I want to just switch it up and go this time. This person just graduated from college. They have a bunch of student debt. Let's put them in charge <laughs> just for once to see what happens. You know, just, just as a aside in, in, you know, like I don't think technically Greece was the first example of democracy. I think they technically exist, but it's like the most famous, like early example, right? And what yeah. they did was they actually randomly chose citizens to take public office. Like you weren't See, elected I, in certain I, stations. Marvin, I've been saying that too for years. It should be like jury duty. Like they should go, who wants to be president? And the last person to raise their hand or someone who's like, oh, I definitely don't want to do that. Yeah, that's it's got to be someone who pick. did not raise their yeah. hand. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's how you should pick like uh, Boy Scout troops. Like whoever yeah. takes them out, it's like, who wants to take all these kids? Whoever's all excited about taking, I'm like, yeah, I don't trust you guys. <laughs> let's, pick the guy, let's pick the guy that, that didn't raise his hand. Oh um, God, fine. Yeah. I'll take God him. damn it. You know, he's not going to be yeah. touching the kids. He doesn't even want to be there. Yeah. Um. So just anyway, gotta, I just got to make sure they're fucking, they're fucking yeah, alive when I come back. <laughs> I just got to bring them back alive. Um. So uh, I, I'll, I'd also like to bring something new to the to the podcast. Maybe we do it every episode or a few episodes. But this week in science, we should do oh, you know. Oh. And I think uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up, it, 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 I don't know if it's science or biology. It's science, I think. Is these goddamn monkeys, dude? Somebody's <laughs> got to be done about these goddamn monkeys. <laughs> I was reading this thing. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> They're getting really violent, dude. They're getting I hope really, that's have, all the context you have. <laughs> I hope that's it. <laughs> They're just getting really violent. <laughs> this week in science, we need to do something about these goddamn monkeys, man. <laughs> um, I was reading this article. They've been around for at least hundreds of years unchecked. <laughs> at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> just no, walking around. Yeah. 
no one no one's telling them anything they're just walking around like fucking they own the place dude uh, here's the thing they're getting really violent they're getting really excited they're attacking the old and the really young and i was reading this article and i gotta find it because i got i got it posted on my mm-hmm. on my uh public instagram mm-hmm. that they're saying that apparently monkeys in their evolutionary chain they're entering like the the caveman days like the kind of that's that. sick <laughs> yeah so like pretty soon they'll be catch up to us um because we're going the other way <laughs> <laughs> we'll just meet them in the middle yeah, yeah we'll meet them in the middle dude. well there were there's already like things where like um there's chimpanzees that live on this island and there was like oh um they documented them learning a new behavior uh one chimpanzee i think it's a chimpanzee took um food oh and ran to the ocean and washed it and that made it allowed to eat food like five times faster and oh, then another wow. monkey watched them and was like, whoa, that's sick. And then they, like, within a few months, they're all doing it. The entire And they're island. calling each other, brah. What's up, bro? <laughs> you watching your fucking food, bro? Um, Have they made uh, a no. coconut radio yet? <laughs> oh, very close, dude. They, they're, they're in the Illigan, Gilligan's but Island phase. Just, just throw of, some of wires game. on that island. Just throw some, like, <laughs> copper wires on that island. Yeah. And then eventually they'll start, like, creating, like, computer networks and shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, there's also a, a picture of this um, monkey uh, fishing with a spear. That's fucking sick. They, they saw, they saw, um, I guess they had seen humans and, and that's so was, cool. Yeah. So wow. that's my, that's my, that's they're going to start making thing. weapons and using it against you, us. Dude, I'm telling you, dude, I hope the machines beat it, beat them to, to it because, um, I don't want to fight monkeys, dude. Dude, imagine no, like, no, you know, it's if, you're be, fighting, it's, if you're fighting a cyborg, <laughs> it's kind of like a faceless thing. You don't feel like, like emotion towards it. Cause you're like, ah, oh, well it's, it's, it's metal or whatever shape or form it takes. But if you're like a monkey, feelings dude, mutual. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> It's, that'd be tough to punch a monkey in the face. I'll punch a monkey in the face. Oh, I'll punch a if monkey it, in the face. Easy. Yeah, yeah. The I'm, jungle I'm not book a big taught fan of me to hate monkeys. <laughs> yes, that's about to say. Because they were nothing but troublemakers in that movie. But then that's later true. on, I found out about how racially coded they were, and that made me feel kind of bad and racist. It, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of things. It, it was here. it was a negative portrayal. It was a yes, negative portrayal. True. But, but oh, luckily, we attached it just to monkeys. Yes. yes nothing else. <laughs> they need a monkey out of you, dude. Crucially. <laughs> crucially. Crucially, I hate only monkeys. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, that's boy. this week in science. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> this week in newbie Star Trek, speaking of shitty humans, we watched Suddenly Human. Oh, which yeah. It's, it's kind of like... The reverse of The Searchers by John Ford, you know? Yeah. They decided to not be huge jerks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort <yeah>. of. <laughs> uh, but we can dig into it later. The Suddenly Human, uh, the episode where Picard is forced to touch a child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, first aired on October 15th of 1990. Dan, you said there's a quick trip around the sun this time, so let's do it. Zoom. Okay, so I only got three things on this list. On August, oh. uh, sorry, October twelfth, no one beat Steven Seagal in the box office, but oh, notably, no. Troll Two released. <gasps> so, oh uh, for those listening, if you've ever seen the clip of a guy in glasses, aviator like style, going, they're eating her, and then they're gonna eat me. Oh my god! And then he zooms <laughs> on his face. That's the thing. It's that's the, cra- the crazy part is that's not even the the weirdest thing in the movie. Oh yeah, like, there's a whole there's, there's <laughs> they made movies about this movie. Yeah, it's so like I think it's the, called the best worst movie. Yeah, the best worst movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a fascinating documentary because you watch as like the actors like or like the primarily the main kid actor like he's grown up now and he's like a dentist uh-huh. and what happens is that oh. like he is like all right people like troll too I'm gonna like do the like con circuit. And then, like, you know, get some fun and fame out of it, right? Yeah. And then you see the moment where he goes, what the fuck am I doing? Like, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know, the moment <laughs> the moment where he goes, oh, my God, everyone's just laughing at me. <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. Uh, sure. and, and, and it's just like, ooh, that's 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 harsh. It's like it's a very fascinating doc. The, the, th- the line I remember the most from Troll 2 is the dad because uh, the kid ruins dinner by peeing all over dinner. 
uh -huh. while he stopped time. Uh, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I actually haven't seen the movie, so 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 he his dad sends him to his room, and then he's dad's really angry at him, so he starts tugging on his belt, and the kid's like, "Oh my god, what are you doing?" And it obviously looks like he's gonna whip him with his belt, right? Yeah. But it it immediately transitions into the dad going, "I'm tightening my belt so I don't feel hunger pains," <laughs> and you're like, "What? What? <laughs> That's true. Document because he because he didn't eat dinner. Nobody ate dinner because he pissed off. If you tighten your belt. <laughs> Well, that that that's a masterful fake out in my book. It's a wonderful scene uh, amongst many wonderful scenes. Yeah. Well, you mentioning that, you know, moment in the documentary where he like realizes how much of a joke he's being. I feel like that exact same documentary is probably being made right now about Tommy Wiseau. Oh, no. But yeah. see, the thing is, Tommy is doesn't, like, doesn't know that. He, yeah, like he he'll well, see. He hasn't had his moment yet. That's why I'm saying it's me. He'll, right he'll never have that moment. Tommy Wiseau will never have that moment. Yeah, I think or, for him it's okay, less of a snap, uh, and it's more of like I already know this is a money making machine. He doesn't care. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, okay. I, uh, th that was the alternate explanation I was about to offer. Like he's already had that moment privately. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If at all, and he's it, gotten past. And it. I know, and I don't think he he did because he he is driven by like this desperation to succeed in Hollywood. So like he's willing to like overlook lots of things, you know, to like just make things work. Whereas this guy just was just having fun. And then he was like, oh, well, shit. I did feel like I, okay, there was a brief period of time where I felt kind of bad for how he was kind of being carted around exclusively almost as a sideshow during the disaster artist's like press market, really, or like the press run. Mm -hmm. That was when I felt the worst for him. Ah, he, he was, he was fine. He was relishing in it. He has his millions. He was handsome, <laughs> handsomely paid. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah he's there, there you go. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. fine. He's fine. But Jesus, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> this was supposed to be short. The 15th of October, release date of the original Secret of Monkey Island game from LucasArts. Oh, it's a fun game. And fun game. yeah, just notable is a major entry in the adventure game genre. Um, I actually haven't played any of the series myself, so I can't speak too much about it. So yeah, never moving finished. on. This was, th this is just around the time, this week actually, well, in 1990, around uh, October 15th, was when Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby reached the peak of its popularity at fourth place in the Billboard charts. Oh, okay. And that was actually it. No cool. more things around the sun. We mm. ran out. <laughs> <laughs> the sun ran yeah. out of juice. Yep. Well, you know, it'll hopefully never run out. Sponsorships. Uh huh. Uh huh. Express VPN. That's our first sponsor, as usual. Listen, everybody, the internet's a wild place. It's full of disgusting things and people prying, spying on you, trying to see what you're doing. If you want to make yourself more anonymous, you should get yourself a good VPN, like ExpressVPN, because ExpressVPN not only is a fast like the name suggests, it's also one of the most secure VPNs in the world. Governments have tried to break into ExpressVPN, gather logs, but they don't take any logs. There's no records of what they've done or what you've done. And there are widely accessible 3,000 plus servers in 160 locations spanning 94 countries. And it works on pretty much every device you can think of. If you have a device, there is almost certainly an app for it. And it actually works with Netflix, Hulu, lots of other streaming services because they keep changing their IP addresses so Netflix can't keep up. And if you go to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek, you sign up for 12 months, they're gonna give you an extra three months for free, which means the entire package is 49% off. That's only $6.67 a month. And if you're not super satisfied with ExpressVPN, you can always return it because it's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no commitment. You can just try it out, see how you like it. If it works out great. If it doesn't, you can always send it back. So again, that's expressvpn.com. Send what back? <laughs> <laughs> send the VPN back, the just throw it back. Throw yeah, it back. Put it back the, in this little VPN box. And yeah, throw it back in the ether of VPN, VPNs. So that's expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. If you sign up for hey, 12 I was months. Just, sorry. <laughs> that's fine. What were you saying? What were you going to say? I was just saying, I was just using it at the dentist's office. Oh my God. So the dentist had free Wi Fi no and, my, and my mobile <laughs> network was dying like crazy. So I was like, well, I better use the Wi Fi, but first I better protect <laughs> myself. And you had no, now the dentist has no idea what's on your phone. He was trying to look at it before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, ExpressVPN.com slash newbie Star Trek. You sign up for 12 months, you get another three months for free. 49% off. What a fucking good deal. All right, Ricardo, let's do it. Ricardo, Hello. could you please tell us what happened in this episode? Yes, lay it on I us. I can. 
Um, so these dudes are coming from a mission or going to deliver something. They're in the middle of something, dude. They're always <laughs> busy doing shit, mm-hmm. drinking out of cups. And um, <laughs> just cops in general. Yeah. And so they get this distress signal from this little ship. And they're like, hey, you got to careful because like, these dudes, it kind of sounds a little racist. Every time they talk about a different race of, of aliens, they yeah, always kind of sound a little too. racist, right? Yeah. Like, they're like, yeah, they're like these like- guys, these guys are no good. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> they like booby traps. What do you mean? Like, maybe that's just, he's like, no, 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 no. These guys will fucking fuck you. Every Tolarian yeah. just loves yeah. to booby trap. <laughs> Don't leave your, like- your spaceship because they'll, they'll take the rims <laughs> off your fucking spaceship. <laughs> Like I uh, have to acknowledge I, that it's slightly more valid because it's literal other species than ours. But it's like since the allegory is so often used, like in a race to race, like ethnicity yeah. thing, that's why it always gets so muddled and awful. Yes, mm-hmm. it's never mm-hmm. a great allegory. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, remember, remember the electrolytes, Ricardo? Yes. So those were the Torellians. I was about to mention this. <laughs> <laughs> and what, which ones are these? And these are, these the, are Tal- the Tellurians. Yes. Not to be confused with the other Torellians. Or also, the other Torellians. So, yes. so these are like or Gatorade without other the electrolytes. They're, they're electrolyte-free Gatorade. <laughs> yes. Also, okay. Tellurians were also first mentioned in Code of Honor. You know the episode where the other two Klingons showed up and then uh, like they had, they were on a ship? That was yeah, like they found Klingons on a ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, that was our, that was, yeah, that was that was that. That was a long time. It was ago, like yeah. first or second season, though. No? It was second season, I think. Yeah, it was, it was a little while ago. It was over. It was like the first time. Cl- I think it was the first time Worf encountered like uh, where was challenged by other Klingons to be like, "Hey, you're not Klingon enough, dude." Yeah, it's also the when you saw Klingons yelling in the air when someone dies. Right, right. Go, ah. Oh, I think I remember that. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. that's that's, so that's the, pretty memorable. They did the uh, the Tim Allen. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> All right. So they were on a Talarian ship, but we oh, did not it. see any Talarians that episode. Yes, not without my Talarians. Uh, I like how they're like, oh, fucking wharf duty piece of shit. You can't. You don't even like hot sauce, dude. He's like, oh, I love hot sauce. <laughs> good enough. And he's like, nah, nah, dude. You you like that fucking mild fucking Taco Bell sauce, dude? I'm talking about fire. <laughs> bro and he's like no I, I like all hot sauces and he's like nah dude not not yeah. like the bomb um <laughs> so these dudes these electrolytes are like hey gotta be careful with these dudes they like to set buoy traps yeah and they're like eh let's throw caution to the wind who's here let's see let's throw my my number one you go down there in case you get booby trapped uh, it might be booby let's trap see. let's send the second yeah. in command yeah uh, Beverly, yeah, I'm not the captain. It might be booby trapped. Yeah. <laughs> Beverly, you head down there as well. Lead doctor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Worf, my number yeah. one guy. Yeah. Security you chief. Go too. Yeah. yeah. You go too, pal. <laughs> so they get there and these dudes are supposed to be aliens that like the booby trap, but bum, bum, bum. One of them is fucking human. Mm. Uh, by the way, they all kind of look human. They just look a little yeah. funny. They, they just got a little thing. That's yeah. actually was a big, uh, what's it called? A regret apparently the producer had about this episode. He was like, they needed to be way more alien, and they just didn't do it. Um, they needed a little. As of right cool. now, they're just another weird forehead race. Yeah, which is dime a dozen in this. Fucking yeah, because yeah, they're, they're it everywhere. It would have been more meaningful if he was like, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, why are you wearing gloves? Because I don't want to fucking touch you, fucking sick bastards. <laughs> um, that would have made more sense because like he looks, he would look just like the humans yeah, and these yeah. people would look completely different and he doesn't want to touch the humans. That I would, would love if they're like a race impactful. of like tentacle people. And he yeah, was they like, should, they I want to yeah. go back to my dad, my tentacle dad. What if they yeah. were like the fish people, you know, remember yeah, the ones yeah, that, yeah. that decided to like eat the fish? The one yeah. that are the, the, the ones that are uh, vaping all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Not the too. ones that are vaping it, it all the could, time, but it could be yeah, that too, though. Yeah. Harmonica the vapor, vapors. Yeah. The harmonica vapors. It could be that too. Yeah. Well, something, something eat. weird. It needed They're to be weird. Cancer. <laughs> um, so, Musical so cancer. yeah, they take them back and they, apparently it was like, um, the ship was like a training ship. So everyone's, everyone's a youngling as they call them <laughs> in the star Wars lore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm pissing off a bunch of people right now. Yeah, yeah. They're like, God damn it, dude. If you bring up fucking Jar Jar Binks, I swear to God, I'm going to keep listening. Okay, <laughs> just, just a slight Star Wars aside. I really enjoyed that. That's I think that's the first time they even introduced the word youngling because I think otherwise they would have had to say the phrase 
Anakin killed all the children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So these dudes, when they get nervous, they start chanting. Mm, <laughs> no. It's like <laughs> It's like uh, my kid was was watching when this this scene was happening. And <laughs> did he start doing it? And, uh, he's like, oh, it's like Dumb and Dumber. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. You hear, you hear those oh, ones? Nice ones. Yeah, that's nice fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh man, insert. You want to hear the most annoying dumb sound in the world? <laughs> ah, hey, you want to hear the worst sound in the world? <laughs> It's just Ray Romano. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Listen to my voice. It's just Ray Romano saying, hey, Ma. <laughs> hey, Ma. Um, hey, so was, hey, Ma. <laughs> I was watching an episode of every, because, you know, Sarah's parents are visiting and boomers love watching t- TV. Yeah. So we had to get the YouTube TV set up. And I was watching Everybody Loves Ray. By the way, you're, you're turning into one because you said the YouTube TV. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but, then, but then, like, we were watching it, and I was just you, like... You're like a vampire that just turned, but you don't know you're a vampire yet. And you're like, oh, that smells delicious. What happened? And then Dan's in the back. And he's like, oh, I just cut myself. He's like, you're like, oh, no, no. I, oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Everybody Loves Raymond now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just watching it, and I was just like... This isn't comedy. This is just like, a, if you took out the laugh track, this would be like a really tense drama scene because everyone is just huge assholes to each other and they all hate yeah. each other. Yeah. And I was well, just, that's the secret of sitcoms. Yeah. That's no, sitcoms. But, but like, I think certain sitcoms you watch and you're like, oh, they're just, you know, it's just jokes and they're having fun and that's okay. fine. Like, you know like, what? Actually, I think like, I'll bet like a, that, you know, uh, like we both watch Drew Carey a lot. Yeah, I was about to mention we, the Drew Carey he, show. Yeah, yeah. They they jabbed at each other a lot. If you didn't have laugh tracks and and you know left them out, like there were there would be moments where it felt mean too. I I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's like clearly like more like jokes. Whereas like, especially like, if it was like dude. Mimi versus Drew. Remember yeah, all those? Yeah. But everybody everything, loves Raymond. Everything is like that, dude. Even like go back to Happy Days, dude. They're making fun <laughs> of Potsy, dude. Just well, fucking <laughs> calling him a piece of shit, basically. <laughs> Well, everybody loves Raymond. It was just like the, the episode I was watching. It's like, what's it called? Uh, Ray's mom hates his wife. <laughs> you know, that makes sense. And then you're just like, oh, why does she doesn't like the way she talks? And like, and then his, his, Ray's wife is like, why don't you stand up for me? And Ray's like, well, you know how my mom is. This is like a drama scene, <laughs> like <laughs> with the same like dialogue. Well, and don't you don't you know tr- uh, drama plus laugh track equals comedy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you, if, you put a, if you put a laugh track, <laughs> if you put a laugh track on any drama that's won an Oscar, you, it's fucking genius, dude. It's funny <laughs> style, dude. Um, so put a laugh anyway. track over Citizen Kane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he comes in. Luke Picard comes in, and he and then they're all fucking yelling, dude. The most annoying fucking sound <laughs> in the world. And he's like, ah, shut up, you fucks. And then everyone shuts up, basically. <laughs> And then it basically they start going like, "Hey, Beverly!" First of all, when Beverly showed up to 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 get him, collect him, mm-hmm. I was like, he's, he's, "She's gonna definitely kill this guy." <laughs> <laughs> Another victim. Get get Beverly away, or dude. Or you know what? I, I, I we should start adjusting our expectations. Beverly only kills side characters. Mm-hmm. She oh. never kills a main character. Well, almost never. Well, this guy's a side character. He's like a one-off character. He could die at yeah. any moment. <laughs> no, I mean, like whoever the main character is of like the episode, she's unlikely to kill because they need to last the episode. So, so you're saying she'll kill one of his friends? Yes, or that's far <laughs> and, more easy and, to expect. And they didn't really touch on whether she saved all of them or not. So exactly no, maybe right, dude. So also, in, in my book, they're dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, At least three of them are dead. She probably was the one who broke his ribs and his wrist and decided to like say, "Oh yeah, they, they, he had previous injuries before he came yeah. here." <laughs> and and there you go. <laughs> so so she barely goes, "Hey, they had previous injuries before they got here." It, it looks like child abuse right away. Mm. And my She's thing like, is like, know. Beverly, <laughs> Beverly, shut the fuck up, dude. You are the worst mother in the world, dude. I would not be talking, dude. I would not be talking if I were you, pal. And then, yeah, but she is an ace at one thing, not at, doing anything with yes. her kid. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, so she's she's a non-violent violent offender yeah uh her hers is is neglect she doesn't yeah, yeah she doesn't abuse hit her or neglect yeah she doesn't is hit yeah, yeah a form of abuse but you yeah, know. yeah she doesn't hit wesley she just drops him off of the corner of the street and then yeah. drives away 
Yeah. <laughs> and goes and kills to feed her, <laughs> her hunger for death. Um, and then she pays off a bully to hit Wesley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, right away, I'm like... <sighs> I'm already siding with the alien dude because I'm like, as as a as a father of a rambunctious kid, <laughs> my kid's broken his foot once, and we thought he broke it again. Um, mm. And he's only six years old. So these dudes, they're all over the place, dude. They're jumping. They're fucking doing somersaults. Yeah, they're doing jackass type shit before they even know what jackass is, dude. <laughs> so. I'm already like, ah, oh, fuck this. This kid's not. So, so you're abuse. on the side that that it's like he was telling the truth. Uh, yeah, Endar, yeah, Endar was telling the truth. Okay, yeah, yeah. so Sarah believed the entire time that he was still lying. No, really? no, I, I don't think he's lying. Yeah, no, I, I don't think, think so. Yeah, I, I don't think like, it was written that to be that way anyway. Yeah, I think yeah. the intent of the episode, and based on what the producers have said, was that you know it was supposed to be like a misunderstanding. Yeah, and right. Picard's like. Going, oh yeah, I understand. I'm supposed to like wash it over, but she was still suspicious. I think she was, and then I think that actually uh, still resonated in the contemporary time during then because apparently they got lots of angry letters from parents being like, "Oh my god, he's clearly a child abuser. Why did you write the episode to send him back?" So right, and so yeah. Sarah would have been writing one of those letters. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and they've been like, "No, no, no, no. He didn't. No, like we we wrote it. We know that he didn't. He didn't abuse him. No, he abused him." <laughs> No, no, no. We literally made this up. Like this is not real. No, no. She should be arrested. No, no, no. no. He's not real. Um, he's gone. And, <laughs> yeah, he's off to another series. He's off. Um, uh, by this way, this this kid, I I kind of recognize him, and I'm like, who is this fucking guy, dude? He yeah. he looks a little familiar. And then I looked him up. All oh, the cats here. I looked him <laughs> up, and he he was in television. Terrorvision, what's that? Terrorvision is one of those movies that's like one of those shitty horror movies that is good because it's so bad. Oh, okay, okay. It has right. like everything thrown into it. Like it's it's part zombie movie. It's part like poltergeist. It's so many movies in, in <laughs> one in one. Uh you should check it out if you is that cut chance. on his lip real then? A little a little scar? Because I well, you saw Terrorvision. Did he have that? I don't the, remember. I don't remember okay. like that that detailed, but yeah, because I remember thinking be. that if it's if it's like not like actually a scar. I, I remember thinking like, oh, it's a good like little makeup detail because he's rough and tumble, right? Yeah. So yeah, he yeah. would have gotten a little scar maybe, you know? Yeah. He looks a bit like a blonde and blue eyed Robert Pattinson to me. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can see that. I yeah, can see where you're yeah. going with that. He's got that. He's got that, uh, that profile. Weird face. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then sure, De- let's just Deanna, that. Deanna's like, uh, <laughs> sorry. He, basically he tells, Deanna tells her like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta like bond with this kid for no reason at all. Like, why is it Picard's <laughs> job to do this? It's like, no, you bond with him. Like, I don't, don't want to bond with anybody. I'm the fucking captain. I should have to fucking <laughs> bond with anybody. Uh, yeah, that's probably the most why, questionable part of the episode for me. I was like, why the hell does it have to be him? Like, yeah, yeah. Deanna, you're just like deciding on your own all of a sudden that it has to be him. Why? He doesn't uh, like many, women. How many thousands of people <laughs> are there on the ship, dude? And 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 Picard gonna do it? It could be it could be uh Sully, the the transporter. What's his name? <laughs> Sully. Uh Miles O'Brien. Yeah, Miles That's O'Brien. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be he'd well, be great. It could have been Mike Wazowski. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I was just like, are there are, is is Deanna the the single lone counselor on the entire enterprise? <laughs> Is, She's is the card is the only man. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Think, so is Deanna is really is Deanna Troy the only counselor on the ship? I don't know. But like they only refer her as the ship's counselor, not yeah. one of the ship's counselors or the head or the head counselor but like, or but like is no one else among them like trained in like at least some th- like therapy <laughs> Like you know, then she know shouldn't be in the, she shouldn't be on the bridge. Board. <laughs> she shouldn't be on the bridge, dude. She, her 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 agenda should be full. Her 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 schedule should be like jam packed. People that need help. <laughs> yeah, there's like thousands of people on the ship, right? So now they cool. outsource a holodeck version of of Deanna, Deanna for people to meet with. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she tells them to 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 be more uh, be like be 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 more of a father figure. She uh, was she, she was says. useful actually. They're right at the beginning because they were yeah. like. Oh, this is a ship's booby trap, and she's like, "No, no, no! There are people. There are life signs in that ship, and they're fading." And she, it was like, "Oh, wow! Actually, helpful. We know yeah. exactly what's going on now." Yeah. <laughs> now you're going to conveniently lose that power in a few episodes. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and it will and remain s- unclear for several s- episodes more. <laughs> um, so she, so she's like, you got to be a father figure to this dude. And, and and then Picard's like, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I tend to not like kids. I hate and, kids. <laughs> and here's my th- I appreciate that, that moment, too. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels like someone without kids wrote that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> sure. But, but hear me out. I don't think... I haven't met anybody who's like who has previously said, "Oh, I don't get along with kids." That hasn't just been with a kid for like five minutes and then just been like normal, like, "Oh, fuck yeah, cool." He's just a human. I don't. There's nothing different about. He's just a human that does crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that that aspect of Picard's personality, where he just can't stand children, like it. The show it it started off weird, right? Yeah, like the very first time he mentions it, it's like, "Oh, Riker, let's have a meeting, a one on one meeting." Um. Just gotta let you know, I really hate kids. <laughs> yeah, <heads laughs> and that's up, how dude. the series starts. I hit, I punch like, babies, <laughs> um, and they keep pushing his point, and it's just not super believable. Yeah, that it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's like, like I can understand. <laughs> like on paper, it sounds like well, it, it's a fun trait for him to have because it's a situation in which he is not in control, most likely, right? Or or like where he's very unlikely to have total control, and it like it flusters him that he can't, and he can't use his usual military or like you know starfleet chain of command like authority or tactics um necessarily to deal with children but lucky for him this adolescent before him and uh jono or whatever mm. responds very well to military chain of command yeah yeah lucky yeah, for him yeah and so it's like the perfect kid for him to interact with yeah, yeah. exactly he got a shortcut yeah 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 exactly <laughs> so so if anyway, Picard's like, all right, I'll fucking do what I got to do. Fuck this shit, dude. So he goes and he's like, ah, Jonah, what's up, dude? Well, first he goes and uh, I don't know if it's this this part or the next. I think it's this this scene where he, he goes into his room and Jonas is fucking a blasting fucking tool. And, <laughs> and it's like, he's like, fuck yeah. It's yep. like tool and it's Pantera yeah. together. Dude. I was like, oh, shit. It's, it's Star Trek's version of space metal. I was like, all yeah. right, that's cool. It, well, it's like, it's like prog rock kind of shit. Like, yeah, it's not yeah, quite yeah. metal. It's like, it's like, it's definitely like space tool. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like yeah. experimental, <laughs> experimental, but a little hard. Yeah. Um, and, and he's sleeping in a fucking shiny space blanket. Yeah. It, it yeah, can't just a be a space hammock. Space hammock. It can't just be a regular hammock. No. Yeah, it's a Talarian, it's a Talarian space hammock. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you sleep in the bed? He's like, ah, too soft, dude. I'm used to, I'm used to hammocks, dude. Everywhere. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's like Pandora, dude. There's hammocks everywhere, bro. Um, <laughs> And so he's like, ah, you know, we, he, he starts telling him about his like childhood and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he has a little bit of a breakdown. He's like, oh no, like I'm sad. And he keeps constantly like fighting feelings. Like, like maybe like it's PTSD. Yeah. 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 And, oh wait, um, have we gone over the fact that like he is the grandson of a right. living, living admiral, like from Starfleet, like she has a, yeah. uh, like she, he has yeah. a grandma. Yeah. His last surviving family member is this old admiral lady. Yeah. And, and also and crucially, his parents were killed by, you know, the people who raised him. The by the Talarians. Yeah. Yes. The so these electrolytes. electrolytes, their rules are like, hey, if, because uh, the electrolyte dude said he had a family, right? He had a kid and then they, yeah, they were yeah. killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, well, I, you know, this kid was an orphan. So like, I find her's keepers. Like, he's a fucked have a up culture. Or, My culture says up. if <laughs> it's a very like apocalypse, new Genesis. Sort of yeah, thing. But, yeah. But hear me out, dude. Like, you have a kid. And you were at war and you happened to take your kid to war. <laughs> <laughs> and you Which die. is what they do. Apparently, yeah. this is what they do yeah. in their society. You, yeah. You die in said war, right? Well, you know, you back want, in the you, day, firstborns were bargaining chips, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, true, yeah. True. So, you want the enemy to just leave your kid there to die because he's not being fed or anything? Or do you want your kid to be taken care of? By the enemy, I would 100 percent go. Yeah, take him. It's fine as long if you're gonna feed him and and fucking do with this shit. Um, you know, broken feet, foots all the time. Uh, take him. It's fine. But would you want him to adopt him versus POW him and then return him after conflict is over? But I mean, he only had one grandmother, and it's like she's a. You think she was gonna quit fucking Starfleet to take care of this kid, dude? She might. Maybe. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's possible. Um, but anyway, my thing is like it was during war. And he, it was better than being POW. He wasn't in a cell. He was he was literally being taken care of as, as like as like the dude's kid. That's true. Um, and and uh, the episode itself, at least the the overt text, 
says that his dad was like his, his stepdad essentially like really really loves him and really yeah, takes and, care of him and like adoptive father yeah and and like yes adoptive father and you could t- i mean by the actions uh he is willing to almost to, start a war that he's yes, definitely going to yes, lose yeah. in order to get right, his son right. back <laughs> that's not that's not someone that that's abusing somebody and is like well i need them back to abuse him some more that's somebody who's like that's my kid i'm i'll go to war for this kid yeah um and also, I don't think that, like, I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, but I just just seeing this episode, it doesn't seem like he's trying to get back because he's got, like, some sort of Stockholm Syndrome. It seems like he wants to get back to, to make his father proud. Like, hey, look, I was, I was captured by the enemy, and I fucking, I was a tough guy. You know? Well, I think it's not, I think it's actually, like, he genuinely just misses home. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he's, he, his... He's basically grown up. He just, he just misses his home culture. Yeah. Which yeah. that's the part of the episode that I thought was a big issue is that. Um, so I think what should have happened is that Picard, first of all, just to skip ahead slightly, Jono keeps saying, oh, when I'm stressed, uh, yeah. I run by the river. He says this multiple times and I yeah. can't do any of the things that let me get out my stress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Picard says. And it's, and it's because Picard prevents him from listening to his metal, his prog rock, and yeah, listening fucking to tool, dude. Uh, like, he or, doesn't even provide him a space, which is easy to do on a ship yeah, like that. So yeah. I thought give him, what, give him the holodeck with the fucking river, dude. I thought exactly. that's what he was gonna do. I thought yeah. he was yeah, gonna I be thought like, that too, and yeah. he didn't fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. I thought, okay, just recreate his home so you can feel a bit better, or at least let him listen to his Here's music the, the in the fucking holodeck, or let him yell in there or something. Right? He he, he killed two birds with one stone dude but instead he fucking makes him play racquetball with him which picard has never done before I, if you're gonna have like a like a sports scene why is hey, it at fencing? least it's tron racquetball it's kind of yeah, cool yeah, looking yeah. <laughs> yeah. but why isn't it fencing <laughs> no, a sport that picard has shown multiple times that he loves to do because he doesn't want to weaponize his kid give him a new fucking arsenal it's not like he was about to go to trial for data or anything yeah <laughs> here's the thing this is why i think he was killing two birds with one stone okay. he was trying to see if this guy really wanted to go home or if he could change his mind and keep him here or the on the enterprise and at the same time he humiliated wesley he got <laughs> pie in his face or whatever <laughs> banana split also oh, wait, yeah, he probably part. made he probably made wesley jealous like dude i've been here all these years and you've never invited me to fucking play ball, dude <laughs> you, you bent all the rules to give me privilege and get you know i'm i'm now an ensign official ensign but but he can never, never have his love never have his love dude and he did it on purpose <laughs> yeah um, i can give you my approval but never my love yeah so <laughs> he, he throws blue ice cream all over his yeah. face why is it blue yes it's very weird split. he, he called it one is it it's bubble bantha, gum ice bantha, cream bantha yeah milk. i was about to say it reminds me of bantha milk and i was like yeah. that's weird why is it like this i mean there is bubble gum ice cream that is colored blue but that'd be make for a crummy banana split in my that'd be, opinion that'd be gross yeah yeah i don't want no good. bananas in my yeah. uh, no 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 and um uh, his dad uh jarell he shows up and he's like hey, <laughs> i want my son <laughs> <laughs> I want my son back or I want to go to war. Fuck you guys. I'll fucking kill you all. Marlon Brando. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to use him. He shows up. Yeah. He's like, oh, $50 million. 50 minutes. Look how they months. massacred my boy. <laughs> uh, and so they, so he's like, fuck you. I'll be back. And then Picard and them are like, dude, these guys, uh, they have fucking Gatorade water guns for, for weapons. They're not going to, they'll die. And yeah. so that even comes with rockets. <laughs> like, yeah. the, 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 like, like, like missiles. That, that really colors it. So he, knowing that this race of people will die going mm-hmm. to war against the Enterprise, mm-hmm. they're still willing to do it because he wants his kid back so much. That's mm-hmm. not someone who who is abusing this kid and, and is like, yeah, I, need, I think uh, I think that act is for me what cements the fact that he's really like doing it because he wants to get his son back, not because yeah. he's trying to make a point. Yeah. Well, I feel like every interaction and action he takes like, like all together, like paint a pretty clear picture. Yeah. I wouldn't want, I, I don't think I ascribe that much weight to any one thing he does, mm-hmm. but all together it, it's fairly clear. It's like, this isn't about control. It's about like he and Jono clearly want to be reunited, you know, on both sides. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. And you have the typical fucking Karen, AKA fucking Beverly going, no, nah, he's abused. Look at him, dude. He's a different race. Um, <laughs> to be ah, fair, I hate it. It is a bit weird when Jono goes, I've always slept in my captain's room. And then immediately Sarah and I were like, oh, that's a little weird. 
<laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> and there were uh, lots weird of scenes. humans. Well, I think that's, that's like true. the first. I think that might be the first indicator. It's like it, it's something that, in retrospect, reveals how close he is to his father. That's true. That's in, in that and in that culture, that's probably like fine. You know, yeah. Whereas, yeah, it's like your captain is your dad, you know, and like yeah. they are so <laughs> they, they are so like synonymous that you can't really think of them differently. Oh, captain, my yeah. captain. Yeah, yeah. Ron that is something that's subtly kind of revealed is that He's your captain heart. is kind of your dad versus yes. like ca- a captain captain. Which is, which is why it's supposed yeah. to be a pretty emotional and like weighty moment when he does that head thing with Picard at the end. and Yes. Or yes. like as he refers to him as a captain, like yes. a, 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 a suitable surrogate captain slash dad. Right, right. He, he, he became a father real quick. Because <laughs> yeah. he was a military kid, I'm telling you. Yeah. 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 And so um, Picard takes him, tries to like bond with him, and he takes him to play racquetball, space racquetball. They're wearing very uncomfortable shoes to play sports. <laughs> They're wearing like dress shoes. Um, and Rest then he in takes peace, him, David Warner. Yeah. <laughs> and then he takes him to the bar. Classic, classic fucking dad move. Yeah. And he tells him, oh, here, you know, here's Wesley. And he's like, oh, what are you eating, you fuck? And Wesley's <laughs> like... Wesley's like, oh man, yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> yeah, Wesley's like, oh, this is called a, a banana split. But and then I forgot the scene where he goes to, I guess is is it's Picard's ready room or whatever, whatever fucking office he is, it's, and he it's starts touching yeah. everything. Yeah. He starts yeah, touching yeah. everything, and then at one point he tells uh, Worf like, oh, why are you a slave to these people? Fuck these people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was badass. You well, the room, the room, them. the room plants a Chekhov's knife pretty well, though. At least when he's touching yeah, it, he's yeah, like, oh. Yeah. Those the knife yeah he doesn't he doesn't hit him with the sextant though the sextant's just a separate thing Stop. yeah he's like i'll fucking hit, i'll fucking hit you with an astrolade um <laughs> so they're hanging out and they go have fucking smoothies or whatever and then it, it gets on fucking wesley's face and everyone has a laugh data doesn't get it classic data fucking robots yeah. don't understand humor fucking idiots <laughs> Because he had a fucking just just laugh. Why doesn't Data just program his Tim to go? Oh, everyone laughing. I'll just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then Data's um, weird in that he can't emulate certain things that are just mechanical, like whistling. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know why. There's, <laughs> there's absolutely nothing. This is the inherently action. human about whistling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, he goes and he has a fun day with fucking Picard. And then, it, oh, and then there's one thing in the bar though, right at the end, Picard goes up to Riker and Riker goes, wow, he's, he's having a good time. He's laughing. I haven't seen him like this, you know, in a while or ever. And then Picard's like, yeah, like an hour ago, he was fucking crying. It's not even an hour, <laughs> half an hour ago. Yeah. It was just yeah. half an hour ago. <laughs> it was just like, like Picard's just like putting him through the ringer list on this whirlwind of activities. <laughs> yeah. But also like way to spill his sensitive moments out to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and he's like ah, he's crying, listening to fucking Tool, being all. Ah, my dad. We listened to Tool together and started crying. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, when you said that he was killing two birds with one stone, I thought the other stone or the other bird that was going to get killed by your example was that he chose racquetball to make sure that the sounds of the ball bouncing around would make him break down in an emotional. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and triggers PTSD. <laughs> yeah. It <laughs> makes sense. I need you to remember the war. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember um, when you lost your parents, Jono? <laughs> remember when your mother died in your arms um, from from gunshots that sound like <laughs> racquetballs? I guess. <laughs> I mean, that's what apparently triggers it. I like it's kind of hard to pick up on a little bit. It's it's, yeah. it's not the clearest thing in the world. Yeah, they just start fading in, like you know, sounds of war. There's a few things that aren't clear in the episode. I think like the next seat isn't very clear either that Ricardo is about to go into. Well, when he right. stabs him? Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Why does he stab him? Like I thought it, I, this is where my brain took me to a different place. And I was like, Oh, this is pretty fucking interesting. Which is, I thought he was like a Manchurian candidate that like they had programmed oh, him from, uh, from okay. birth to be like, when we tell you the code, you fucking stab him, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so because what, what I thought was actually going to happen in that scene was he was going to go up to the bed and lie in the bed next to Picard. That's what I thought for a second. No, I, was, I, knew, I knew death was coming. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting thing. My misinterpretation of that scene was I thought he stabbed his crotch. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it was a crotch level. The eye lines and distancing made it feel like he was yeah, more around his crotch it's, area. It's, He's off the card. Someone's going to leave his room not being able to fuck, fuck you. It made, it made a classic film um, school mistake. Didn't yeah, put the eye lines correct. Eye lines. Yeah. Um, 
And so uh, he gets stabbed. And the next scene, fucking Beverly's got his her commercial hands break, down. and then it just yeah, 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 she's got her. She got she's got her hands under the blanket, space hospital blanket. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's also shiny. Um, <laughs> and and Picard looks like he's like, oh, where am I? Who am I? He looks like he's got amnesia for some reason. <laughs> and they lift up the blanket, and then like she's hitting him with the with the laser, and I'm like. Oh, don't let Beverly work on you, dude. Don't let Beverly work on you, dude. <laughs> Wouldn't be the bro. first time. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And so she's looking at gizmos and she's fucking, she's got a, a ray gun. And then, and then the electrolytes show up again. And they're like, hey, where's my son? Give me my son, you bitches. And he's basically like, no, we're not going to do that, dude. It's, it's not going to work out for you, pals. Oh, we forgot to mention. Uh, they're like the Amish. They have a devil's playground thing when they're 14. They're allowed to choose whether they stay in their culture or not. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We forgot to mention oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is why there was a choice asked. So, like, the, the, the dad, Endar, actually asked him directly, do you want to stay with the humans yeah. or do you want to come with us? It's your choice. You do whatever yeah. you want. You know? Which yeah, for their culture it, would be a big pivotal moment, but the show does not treat it as such. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, and so he, he Picard asked to see him and, and they bring fucking Jonos and he's like, oh, I'm here for so you can kill me, dude. Cause I fucking stabbed you, stabbed the captain, got to fucking die. And he's like, motherfucker, you silly bitch. I'm not going to stab you, dude. Uh, <laughs> that's for Beverly to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. So did, so did he want to die? I think he just, he was one, he wanted to make his father proud. Like, cause he, he is that thought what he is? was, I think he was, he thought he was going to be trapped on the ship and I he's think like, he was panicking. Yeah. Do you think it's just like an irrational act or, yeah, I think so. well, he seemed to have a very clear, like next step in his mind. He thought yeah. for sure, this is well, what's going to get his me last killed. Step. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then so I think he was, that. I think he was trying to like commit suicide by command in a so sense. So odd. I, why, what, why would he feel the need to? Die. Suicide by commander. Because because he's about to get trapped in a life that he does not want. He's like, I'm gonna get wrapped up. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna marry. Dina and and not only that, he also felt a great betrayal for feeling like this is a life he could get used yeah, to. Yeah, that's why he did it. But but he had he already did, he committed did. to going back, didn't he? Yeah, the no, only he said that. that but he was only, starting to he, feel like he was, he was having starting second to feel thoughts. like yeah, he was starting to feel that in his own so mind. So he so he's trying to do this simultaneously to make sure he can never want to be human. Yeah, and then. Just end it here. Like I, I can yeah. never be tempted again if I die. Yeah, sort of thing. Hear no. that, or like, oh my god, I can't believe I betrayed my own kind. You know, so badly. I deserve I'm, to I'm die. Being unfaithful. Yeah, and so, yeah. yeah. Drink poison, huh. Juliet. Just like, oh. just like fucking <laughs> Richard Gere in that movie with the French guy. Um, what? So anyway, so uh, he's like, hey, uh, Picard shows up. He's like, no, no need to go to war. I'm back. I'm alive. Beverly didn't kill me. Fuck her. <laughs> and he's and he's like, hey, uh, pistachio. Uh, man, um, <laughs> we are gonna give you back your son because a I don't want this loose cannon on my ship. Dude. Like he's kissing stabbing people, pistachio. dude. Yeah, he's stabbing people all over the place. And um, earlier, Picard had asked Pist- uh, Pistachio's son, what's his name? Uh, Rufio. Um, he, had <laughs> yes, asked Rufio. Him, <laughs> he had asked him, like, hey, do you want to go back or do you want to stay? What do you want to do? <laughs> And he'd also said, why, why is your, why are you wearing gloves? And he's like, cause I don't want to touch the enemy. And he spit on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, metaphorically. And yeah. he goes, he goes, uh, he finally goes on the transporter to get sent back to his friend, uh, his dad, Frodo. And he, he, he <laughs> takes off the gloves. He takes off the fucking gloves. And he's like, friends don't shake hands. Friends got to headbutt each other. And he headbutts <laughs> the card. And I thought that was really cool. And it also proved that not only had he grown by being with his, his own race, but that he really kind of, he just wanted to be with his dad, period. Yeah. I, I, I think it was a bit clumsy, though. I think it should have been, in my opinion, more of like a, yes, send him back. But also, like, he's welcome send back anytime. Back. You know? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that could be a, a, a like a welcome back anytime situation yeah. easily. Yeah. Like they don't even offer that to him. Which like is like Okana, like anytime, any port in the storm, yeah, dude. if you know what I mean, brah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, he never got a face to face with his grandma. It just wasn't. Yeah, like a- or, or Wesley and him didn't get into some hijinks, you know? Yeah, that would have been fun, actually. Yeah. That would have been a good use they're for like, Wesley. Dude, they're like, dude, yeah. you want to take over the ship, dude? <laughs> dude <laughs> yeah. This is one they, time where. They won't do anything to you. They won't court martial you. They're nothing, dude. You can fucking There's do anything, no, dude. This is like Venezuela. No fucking rules. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's like, what do you know about Venezuela, dude? He's like, I read many, many books, dude. About dude, dictators. This whole, this whole yeah. ship runs on crypto. Hugo, Hugo, yeah, he's like, my hero is Hugo Chavez. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Um, but also all that ends well, because that dude ended up with his dad, and Picard learned the valuable lesson. Eh, maybe he could deal with kids. Um, kids are not weird after all. By the way, the ship, the little, the little, um, the Enterprise. Mm-hmm. The, if you're looking at it from the front, it's got little, little like lights, little mm-hmm. lights, and it looks like a USB C plug. <laughs> Doesn't it? You Does just, that- you just uh, invented a new product for Think Geek. Yeah, that's a USB hub. That's the Enterprise. Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's welcome. sick, actually. Yeah, I mean, we already like have actually, the Enterprise pizza cutter. Yeah, or yeah. You, and you could have a uh, USB jump drives that are shaped like shuttlecraft. Yeah, and they just dock. You in. could also have an Enterprise like pocket pussy, dude. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people, you know, really love them ships. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. Marvin with that one. <laughs> No. I'm going to give him the Enterprise D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, the Enterprise doesn't look that fuckable. You know what's a ship that looks fuckable? The little, little hole. I'm talking with the little hole. The no, hole. that's not and that. If you make yeah. the ship big enough, the hole is pretty big. No, you know, you know what's a more fuckable ship? The Millennium Falcon. That's, that's, know, dude. that's a fucking Too many ship. jagged edges, dude. I mean, you'd think so with that <laughs> slot near the, exactly. near the front, slot. but it's a little awkward. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a little it's handle. Like fucking, it's like fucking pliers, dude. <laughs> Take it from um, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, the episodes. It, this was this is a banai episode. There's a lot of there's a lot of nitpicky things that I that I could do. Did with you say episode, Bernard? But, yeah, Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, give me back my tool. Um, <laughs> I just Yo, imagine <laughs> now. I, I imagined instantly Mel Gibson yelling, "Give me back my tool! Give me back my, uh, <laughs> give me back my tool!" Um, so it, it's a benign, benign episode. It's 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 harmless. It's not going to hurt anybody. I, it wasn't offensive to me of how. how Apparently, very was. offensive to lots of people. Though, for some ah, they need to fucking shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do think that I do, think, that, I do think it is a misinterpretation of the, yeah. at least the writer's intent um, yeah. to believe that Endar was an abusive father. Yeah. To be fair, though, if enough people misinterpreted that way, it's also the writer's fault for not making it concrete enough. True. Or but, is it the populace's fault for being wrong? Mm. Yeah, the that's children true. are wrong. I mean, just because the Transformers movies make a lot of money and sell lots of tickets doesn't mean that they are right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude! Here's a crossover that I'd like to see. Two crossovers. Okay. The Fast and Furious franchise mm-hmm. hooking up with the fucking the Jurassic World franchise. We need that, dude. You put those two franchises together, and you have recipe for like a billion dollar weekend opening, like dude. drifting dinosaurs. Like, like they're running the, really fast. Like the dinosaurs are fucking chasing Dom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then like like you go back to the mo- to the to the Fast and Furious movies, and Dom does like and, a, a jumping punch and punches one of the dinosaurs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta go fight, fight fight those locusts from the last movie, dude. Yeah, it could be great. Um, and then Fast and the Furious. Um, oh, I forgot. I forgot the one. They, Transformers. Like, Transformers. Yeah, that's that's the one that'll work. Yeah, dude, that'll work like they right away. <laughs> what do you mean? They're both work right away, dude. No, nope, the Jurassic Park saving the- Ian Malcolm, dude. Yeah, but okay, get in. Okay, Fast you're not, and the you're, Furious. You're not my friend. You're my family now. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, Fast and the Furious and, and Jurassic Park, you have to like figure out ways to slot it together. There are already cars in Transformers, you know. <laughs> you just well, put, cars in Jurassic look, World. If <laughs> you if you get Dinobot, then you can get a dinosaur that can drive a car. Oh, Either yeah. that or turn into a car. Oh my god, that's all three. It's just all yeah. three in one movie. Yeah, oh, man. man. I feel like the Jurassic World franchise is getting a little stale. Like same old shit. It's like fucking put Don Toretto in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when's the last? When was the last time Transformers movie came out? Uh, was, was it Bumblebee? It? No, wasn't yeah. it? No, yeah. no, it was the medieval. Bumblebee one, was actually right? fun. Was it? Uh, the I heard that Bumblebee one? was great because it like had a nice little section like yeah. on Cybertron and had like a G one yeah. battle and all that. So yeah, well, yeah it was apparently well directed. G unit. Fucking Fifty Cent was one of the Autobots. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was on the soundtrack of a start of a Transformers movie for sure, dude. A Star Trek sure. movie. Gotta get in the club. <laughs> Gotta get that blood in the sand. Gotta get those Transformers <laughs> in the club, dude. 
Got to get his shines, yeah, as he would say. <laughs> um, anyway, Wait, hold on. I'm, I want to mention one last thing about the episode because I think it's like a little cool, like bit of um, well, Trivia? not quite an, an actual nod to continuity, but I just think it is nice how Riker, when Picard was off bridge, he mm-hmm. was able to conduct like tense negotiations completely independently. Oh yeah, without, and he's a very yeah. different yeah. style than Picard yeah. does, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah, he like just that. stepped right into him being a captain without really thinking. And he, well, he did say, I, "I'm the captain now." Yeah, he was just being it's, captain. It's almost when there like wasn't a captain. Riker should be a captain. Yeah, it's almost so like it's nice TNG. that they're letting him like stretch out like that when appropriate. Yeah, it's, it's almost good. like TNG should have done a thing where Riker is a captain of another ship, and the Enterprise and Riker ship travel together, like I've always dreamed of. But no, you should watch Battlestar Galactica. I know, I know you said that last time. Two ships, <laughs> one cup. That's what I was hoping the end of Best of Both Worlds Part 2 would be. It's Two like girls Riker. Cup? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he was hoping for. Yeah. He's like really disappointing when, <laughs> when it turns out there's no just hard cuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this better end with. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was hoping it would end with like, okay, well, Riker, we obviously, like there's a conversation. They do it like a psych out. They're like, well, Picard's back. So obviously he will retake command of the Enterprise. But there's still a captain we need you know to what? assign, you know, and they give him a ship that would have been sick. No, dude. Uh, and he, it's like covered in flames. This is what I thought. This is what I thought. Yeah. And it's, it's fuck Don Fredo. He's like, yeah, it's my ship. <laughs> family. Um, <laughs> he just says it. Family yeah. now. Hear, hear me out on this one, dude. <laughs> yeah. Why, that's, I thought, that's what I imagine the Fast and Furious movies to be because I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> if, if the Coen brothers could co-direct a movie together, why can't there be two captains to one ship? Uh, there could have been, the, we could have had that too. That might've been interesting. You yeah. know, two captains. Yeah. Yeah. Two captains, one saucer. Captain, two captains. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I'm going to give this a six. Wow. A six after yeah. all that praise. Well, oh. well, five is like an average. Okay. Uh, I'd, right. give, I'd give it a seven. Yeah. I'm, I'm more in the seven range myself. Seven? Am, am I, am I going too low? Oh no. I mean, you do you, 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 you oh, score. I'll do me, dude. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I, just, I, I think I think I'm 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 misjudging something here. I mean, meaning like my numbers are off. I guess well, it is a seven. I guess it is a seven because because I think what like a five is like a D, right? To me, a f- the five is like something is like this is a bad episode. Because because like, like, if, if you get to a four, you know, it, it's in the negatives to me. Yeah, so, yeah, I feel like we've right. redefined seven, this seven. about three times and also adjusted <laughs> our own scales like on the yes. fly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. To yeah. 20 we have times. No, we have, we're not normalized at all. We're yeah, all, I, I'm going to go with a seven. Change it. Change it. I'm not going to seven, right, dude. All, all right, let's all go with the crowd again. We're all sevens. Go back, go back. Seven. Ding, 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 jackpot. <laughs> yeah, did it, it's everyone. Because like, it's, it's a good concept. I just think parts of it are clunky and they could have done slightly better things here and there. Yeah. Some of it's parts could have been better uh, but i wasn't angry at sure. anything i wasn't like no, oh, no, fuck I, this. I wasn't angry at yeah. anything either yeah, yeah. It's like it's fine it's fine but the, like almost every scene i'd be like oh i wish it was a little bit more like that instead uh, i wish it was a maturing like, kennedy dude i'm telling you yeah <laughs> and i do agree with michael pillar when he was saying like oh i wish they were way more alien yeah you know i, I think that, that would have been a lot neater but although I do get the feeling that if they had been more alien then the negative backlash would have been even stronger Maybe, maybe, but no, they, no, probably not. But they, but they may have been compelled to earn the the guy's a good dad moment more, just because it's easy for you to go, oh yeah, he's probably a good guy, just from his acting as a human, like a human acting. But what if he was like so? You know what? Like what if it was like District Nine, right? Where it's like the the movie has to earn that you trust these bugs. True. You know what I mean? You know, I, that could have been I see interesting. What you mean by that. You know? Yeah, that, like, that might have been interesting. Yeah, and, and because they're so different, you would have to like earn it. Yeah, if then they go again, for this, I, yeah, if they yeah. went for an angle where it's like almost to a point where it's like, shame on you, audience. You had yeah, some. That would have been interesting if they yeah, tried to do like, that. Yeah, yeah, you had some preconceptions based on how these people look, didn't you? Yeah, but you know, Perverts, it turns out. Fucking racists. <laughs> <laughs> fucking racists. But then again, I don't know if I would necessarily trust TNG to be. Not my turn, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> not my Torellian, not my problem. Suddenly human. Thanks for listening, everybody, to another episode of Newbie Star Trek. If you've been liking us, it'd be great if you could give us a rating or a review wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you're listening on Spotify, which I know most of you are because I see it, see the analytics, you can give us a rating. He's on you. 
<laughs> a lot of you have given us ratings, which is fucking awesome. That's it's really great. It actually really, really helps their metrics. So thank you. Yeah, but not nearly enough given the proportions we're seeing. So you got to step it up. <laughs> <laughs> or do, you don't have to fucking do anything. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, if you're if you're on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict, you can give us reviews there. But again, whatever. Fucking whatever. Uh, <laughs> And also, if you want to send us a message directly, like a question, a comment, a complaint, just want to yell fuck word after fuck word in our directions, uh, you can or write tell us, us to stop. Wait, doing has that happened? Has that come? Has that happened? Uh, not not so much that. Uh, other things that are offensive have been sent to us before. <laughs> sure, uh, oh, that's but, great. Yeah, but if, if anyone wants to send us an email, that's contact at newbiestartrek dot com. Contact at newbiestartrek dot com. This week. Got an, uh, he didn't sign his email, but it's from someone named Aaron, A-A-A-Ron. Hey, uh, Aaron. So, a uh, very short letter. It just came with a picture that I thought was funny, which I'm going to put in the Discord chat right now for us. So, it just goes, big fan. I enjoy hearing y'all's first impressions of one of my favorite shows. Just wanted to point out that Worf's, co- Worf's coat rack chair from Family was also in an episode of Friends. Isn't that also oh, Data's face damn. on the wall? <laughs> Those masks. <laughs> it might be. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> uh, I will. I will. Mm, now that you said that, I, I'm tempted to use this as the thumbnail for the podcast episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. That would have made more sense for brothers, honestly. Uh, brothers brothers get a hug. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I guess uh, Star Trek props are just used everywhere. The other thing I want to point out is speaking of reused props, I think. When they okay, so when they go into the medical bay and you see, or not the medical bay, they go into the Telerian ship and you see these like glowing like cylinders mm-hmm. in, in the foreground. I yeah. think that's also in the Last Starfighter, uh, the movie. Really? Yeah, I think it's you know these types of sci-fi props get reused over and over again, uh, sure. and, and I think it was used in that movie. And yeah, I think that's where it was before. I think I, I think I, I remember it being. Oh, I, wait a minute! I think I've also seen those same sorts of props in well something similar maybe in TMNT two Secret of the Use. Oh, maybe in the yeah. TGRI lab. I, they I, might I, have been in the TGRI lab. That's somewhere. possible. I have not seen. I've only seen that movie twice, uh, and and once what when I was a child. And the other time right. was with you in college. So I, I don't remember that movie very well at all. Dustin, if you're listening, I'm, I'm expecting to hear from you. <laughs> uh, okay. Thanks, A.A. Ron. Aaron. Dustin, Dustin, we, and we know, dude. We brought <laughs> it up, but we know, dude. When 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 you came in w- w- and you said, Dan, let's load a pizza, you didn't fucking factor in the goddamn tip, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you owed Dan some money, dude. <laughs> Look, Look, wise man jerk. said, forgiveness is divine, but never yes. pay full price for late pizza. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's not a thing anymore. That's never like that stopped being a thing where you, you would like get discounts because your pizza's late. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guarantee was I feel like cartoons perpetuated any semblance of that deal or or offer far longer than they ever offered it. Yeah, yeah. Probably these pizza restaurants were like, oh my God, we're hemorrhaging money. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's, I'm he's, not going to have a wacky hijinks 11 minute episode of yeah. people trying to, you know, <laughs> game our system. <laughs> Here's Sick the thing is that you don't want to undercook pizza. That's how you end up with undercooked pizzas. That's true. true. And you true. don't want, you don't want drivers, uh, you know, like Crashing. dangerously driving really fast just to get you some fucking like pizza. Like Don <laughs> yeah especially if it affects their tip jesus yes that's not fucking worth it yeah that's a good policy to have gotten rid of actually in it, 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 upon analysis what a stupid policy yeah stupid wise men <laughs> <laughs> not so wise after all uh all right all right well now if you guys have been liking what we've been doing maybe you'll like some other stuff we do Got the Fugitive Frames film podcast where we do reviews on movies and TV shows and other random things sometimes just because we feel like it, you know, whenever that happens. And also we have our YouTube channel, Fugitive Games, where we do Let's Plays of video games. It's actually something I want to continue with Dan. We'll, we'll talk on the side. Yeah. Um, I, I think I might want to continue with, with that. Sidebar. Yeah, sidebar. But not a sidebar. Maybe we'll play we, at the time of this recording this week. Maybe we might play some Star Trek online. I might be into oh. that. Yeah, I could be into that. Who would who would join if we did like a little live stream? 
uh, we want to know. Send us your message. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, by the time this episode comes out, we may have already streamed it. But <laughs> no, no, we we won't. We won't. Maybe, okay. Maybe yes. Well, maybe I don't not. know. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, if if we end up streaming, um, I'll just send a message out to our YouTube and TikTok and yeah, take whatever. it out, dude. All right. Well, then, then yeah, you can find all of the things we do. Lots of stuff. Just go to fugitiveframes.com. It's like a link tree, but it's a nicer website than a link tree. So just go to fugitiveframes.com. It's a lot easier. All right. Next week. Uh, it's funny because Ricardo was singing the song earlier before we started recording. What song? Remember me. That's the name oh, of the is that, is that, it was about, it's about Mexicans? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's about Mexican. I mean, yeah, this is this is the Mexican episode of Star Trek. Nice. So that's that'll that'll be next time. But yeah, until then, see you guys next time, everybody. Stay safe. Watch out for the triple threat of pandemics happening now. <laughs> so. eh, it's fine, dude. We need we need the population <laughs> to to die off a little bit. <laughs> there are but too many yeah. pandemics. Please eliminate three. <laughs> I am thing. not a crackpot. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing: is that not enough people died from from COVID. That's oh, the honest no. truth. We need we need you to not be washing your hands. Go out there, <laughs> dude. Start licking door handles. Do 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 you get very you, close and, and breathing yeah. as hard as you can? Yeah, yeah. yeah do your best <laughs> yeah. to lick the air that others breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I want as many souls to be gone as possible. So we don't have the <laughs> water war, water wars of you know 2050. <laughs> Water world. Really a water world. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. God yeah. Damn it. <laughs> it won't be so watery when we're fighting over water. <laughs> the movie uh, that ended be many it'll careers. Be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Bobby says it's time to end the podcast. See you guys, everybody. Goodbye. Buongiorno. Later, y'all. <laughs>